Welcome back everybody to our fourth day of EREC. I'm really happy to have you all back here as well as uh, Dr. Clemens Pues from Breeze Zero Recycling Germany. He is the managing director and will tell us a little bit about how they are working on making the circular economy really happening in our world. But I don't want to tell you too much. Uh, Dr. Pues, it's your stage. Have fun. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bot. And uh, of course, uh, first of all, good morning to everybody. And uh, uh, thanks a lot for taking your time to listen to uh, our presentation this morning. What I'm going to uh, tell you about is um, our approach uh, within the Schwarz Group to uh, work on the uh, circular economy and on the challenges which we have with regards to uh, packaging recycling and uh, closing uh, the loop. Uh, we call this a closed loop approach uh, within the Schwarz Group. You will see uh, in a moment uh, uh, what we, or how we uh, go about uh, to do this. Um, first, uh, of us, who is pre-zero? Uh, some or many of you probably haven't heard about us. Uh, that's a very simple reason. We are doing business uh, under the name of pre-zero just for about a year. Uh, the company, however, is an older waste management company in Germany, started in 1928, um, bought, uh, acquired by the Schwarz Group in 2018 and rebranded to PreZero in uh, March uh, 2019. Uh, we are part of the Schwarz Group, which you, most, most of you probably have heard under the names of uh, Lidl or Kaufland. Uh, within uh, the Schwarz Group, we have uh, a mother company, uh, which is called GreenCycle. GreenCycle is uh, started as an in-house waste management company uh, to do business for Lidl and Kaufland uh, and developed over the years. And with the challenges which are apparent to everybody uh, with regards to uh, plastic, uh, marine littering, uh, packaging, recycling, etc., uh, uh, the decision was made to take a closer look and a closed look uh, on uh, uh, this uh, issue. So we are part of the Schwarz Group. Um, uh, some figures about us to give you a little idea what we're doing. Uh, we, uh, at the moment, are the fifth largest waste management company in Germany, based in Germany. We're doing business uh, with our own locations in seven countries, six in Europe, and uh, we have a few locations in the United States and California. Uh, traditionally, we uh, started uh, in uh, the upper middle part of uh, Germany, North Westphalia. Uh, in, the in the 1990s, we uh, started to do business in Poland. Uh, and with our uh, plastic uh, sorting and recycling division, we are doing business at the moment in four other countries. We are uh, uh, operating or building two sorting plants in, in the Netherlands and Belgium. And uh, we are a plastic recycler with uh, one location each in uh, Austria and Italy uh, since uh, last year. And in the United States, uh, we are active as a bio waste company and starting a, a plastic recycling division as well. 3,600 employees. Location is in Porta Westfalica, where I'm at at the moment. And um, yeah, that's about the figures. So, what is a closed loop approach to recycling and, and what is our approach uh, to recycling? The headline says a new approach to recycling, but uh, if you look at this uh, kind of uh, picture, most of you probably have seen this picture a few times before and years before. So the uh, uh, approach to think in circles, if you talk about a circle approaches, well, more or less obvious. And uh, at the same time, if you look at this from a practical standpoint and from the business to business standpoint, uh, uh, very difficult or more difficult as it this simple kind of uh, presentation or uh, a way to show it uh, 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 may think of. Um, there are basically two reasons behind this. Um, the idea is to have uh, 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 recyclables uh, uh, used for uh, packaging and fulfilling products, uh, which are then sold to customers, collected uh, at the household, sorted, recycled, and put back into the uh, 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 value chain. And this is not a new idea. 
Um, the problem, however, starts in the past, how this was organized. Uh, in the past, uh, especially with uh, the technology we developed in Germany over the years, it was more or less easy to achieve the uh, objectives which we had uh, uh, from a legal standpoint in, in, in reaching the recycling targets. And the, uh, since the market was new, on each of these steps, the participants, uh, of course, uh, had a, a very tough competition and have, of course, had to look that they organized themselves. And since it was not really necessary to talk to these steps before and after you, um, everybody developed its own business model uh, with uh, different types of uh, uh, investment periods. Some companies like EPR systems in the past worked with timeframes of a year or two. If somebody wanted to invest in a sorting plant, uh, we needed, like us, we needed investment decisions for eight years, which is a problem if you only get contracts for one year. Recyclers, if they talk to uh, uh, producers uh, who want uh, consistent flow of recyclables over time, want to make sure that uh, uh, these recyclables are available for years. But if a uh, 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 recycler only gets input material from a company like a sorter, like us, for a, a contract period of one or two years, then there is a problem. Another point is that on all of these steps, you had different uh, numbers of companies. On some steps, you have one or two or three uh, uh, players, like in the EPR systems. If you go to Belgium, for instance, you have one EPR system, which basically controls uh, one part of this uh, chain. And on other steps, you have sometimes hundreds of thousands of players who are active in this market. And in order to align this, especially looking at the new challenges we have with regards to uh, marine littering, with the high recycling quotas we are facing today, not only from a legal standpoint, but from a public standpoint. Um, and the question is to how to organize this. Well, there are two basic ways. One way is to try to organize this within the market and try to negotiate and, 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 and build business relationships. And the other is um, uh, maybe to try to be a player on each of these steps on your own in order to be able to simply be quick and to develop uh, solutions quickly. And this is basically what the Schwarz Group is doing. We are trying to be present on all of these parts of the uh, value chain. Um, which is not to be mistaken with the point that we want to do everything on our own, just the opposite. We work together with uh, uh, partners on uh, most of these uh, steps of the value chain. So just uh, 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 on the side, this is nothing which means that we want to do everything internally. Um, just a few examples, what we are doing in uh, recycling. Uh, our oldest uh, sorting plant uh, is in Porta Westphalica. We are at at the moment, commissioned 2006, capacity of 120,000 tons. Our, at the moment, newest working sorting plant is uh, located in Swalle in the Netherlands, um, which started in January this year. We are building two other ones at the moment, one in Belgium, one in Bremen, in the north of Germany, together with a local uh, waste management partner, the company Nielsen, just to give an example that we're not doing uh, everything on our own. Uh, we bought uh, a, a recycling company, which is now called Prezero Polymers, uh, with two locations in, in Austria and Italy last year, as mentioned. And we um, more or less uh, developed a joint venture for polyolefine recycling in Germany, in Grünstadt, together with another uh, local waste management company, uh, Meinart, um, as a joint venture. So just two examples uh, that we are not necessarily uh, uh, mistaken, closed loop. Uh, uh, like own loop. Um, some figures uh, at the moment uh, we are doing business uh, uh, for or collecting uh, 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 any type of uh, household waste for about 9.2 million uh, citizens in Europe. That includes Poland and all collection activities we have. Um, uh, we next year in 2021 we will have a capacity of around around about 465,000 tons. Uh, to sort plastic packaging and our then five sorting plants uh, we will operate and uh, we um, uh, have uh, 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 developed uh, our recycling uh, capacity to around 170, 175,000 tons in Germany, in Austria, in Italy and we are 
the commissioning at the Marmetal Recycling Plant at the United States. Um, if you, by the way, convert the 465,000 tons of sorting capacity to inhabitants, we will by next year be able to reach about 22 million uh, citizens in Europe with, uh, uh, for sorting their packaging waste, which gives us a market share of about 6%, which may look a small market share if you look at other markets for the sorting business. This is already a um, uh, very important uh, uh, or large, relatively large market share. Um, what is the overall strategy? It's a five-step strategy of the Schwarz Group um, uh, with uh, uh, some things which you heard uh, in other strategies and maybe one or two things which are really peculiar to the Schwarz Group. Um, one uh, uh, obvious uh, uh, objective we are pursuing is, of course, trying to reduce packaging uh, uh, as we use it for our uh, products which are sold in the retail uh, uh, parts uh, of the group. And uh, uh, if uh, this cannot be reduced, uh, uh, many people, including all the suppliers are working on trying to redesign the material in order to increase the recyclability of uh, uh, those products. Of course, we recycle, as you just saw, within the group ourselves uh, actively. Um, we, uh, in addition, and this is maybe a little peculiar, we move actively plastic from the environment. Uh, in uh, a few projects we are doing, uh, uh, the oldest project we have for four or five years with the WWF is removing uh, uh, old fishing nets, uh, which are lost, for instance, in the Baltic Sea and trying to recycle them. We have uh, a, river, a river cleaning project in Indonesia. Uh, uh, we are trying to uh, transfer our experience from uh, fishing nets, uh, recovery and recycling to Vietnam. Uh, so this is certainly something uh, which you don't find in all uh, groups. And of course, we research, uh, 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 conduct own research and, and uh, 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 company research with regards to all the above uh, mentioned uh, areas. What are our positions or what is uh, important uh, with regards uh, to doing business in this uh, 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 environment? There are certainly some obvious things which uh, you've heard, like that we need uh, a, 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 a reliable legal framework and uh, that we need uh, a reliable and uh, planable market conditions to develop this market. This is something which you've probably heard, but what does that mean really in practice? Just to give you a few examples uh, from the uh, recent uh, uh, developments, the uh, European Commission uh, decided on the uh, 800 euro per ton uh, uh, tax for non-recycled plastic packaging within the COVID-19 financing package, which is supposed to start in uh, uh, January 2021 which basically says that uh, for every ton of non-recycled plastics, each country has to pay 800 euros per ton. Um, the point or the, 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 the challenge we are facing at the moment is not necessarily that we now have uh, this uh, extremely high amount of 800 euros we have to deal with, but more or less the uncertainty how this is going to be implemented. We don't know whether, in fact, this is discussed in some countries already, in Europe, this may be something which is uh, uh, being paid by the uh, uh, general taxpayer from the general household, or that, whether this will really be something which will be a tax for the plastic industry. And not knowing is some, sometimes uh, 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 even more difficult uh, than knowing that there is a concrete problem because you don't know what to do at the moment. We have other points that uh, the legislation we are facing is. Uh, uh, partly uh, organized by the environmental legislation, like quotas we have to reach, this is basically based on environmental law. Uh, um, if, if you want to reach the quotas, however, you are faced with uh, uh, yeah, product law, which is done by the business uh, 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 ministries normally in each country. And um, our experience is that this is not necessarily aligned all the time. So sometimes you have quotas, which in practice cannot be reached. Um, and of course, the challenge is to try to reach them uh, 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 anyway. Um, and of course, now with the finance uh, uh, ministries, the 800 euro tax included, we have a different type of legislative background we have to deal with, 
and of course so not necessarily all work in the same direction um, um, and uh, maybe the last uh, point to mention yes we are working on research uh, uh, searching economic and technical developments like uh, of course we look at the development of chemical recycling which is discussed everywhere but uh, sometimes the solution is not necessary in my opinion to develop something even more you know, innovative uh, in something because innovation sometimes have uh, the problem that they didn't uh, uh, were not tested and sometimes you don't know how they develop in the market but sometimes if you want to improve things like quotas it may be even uh, uh, a good idea to look a little bit back and see what you're doing today and uh, for instance uh, take a look at how your collection systems are organized and whether maybe uh, it's not a question to sort something better but maybe to make sure that what you get to the sorting is really what you want in the sorting process and need in the sorting process and um, yeah thank you very much that was my presentation well dr Pours, thank you so much uh, for that interesting uh, presentation on how you are operating, how you will maybe even operate in the future, what are the challenges we are facing in recycling on on your end. Um, thank you for these experiences you, you could share with us. So uh, there's one question coming in. Do you do you have two or three minutes to answer answer that one? Sure, of course. Yeah, yeah sure, of course. Sure. Uh, all right. He, uh, regarding reset plastic. Is the ultimate target of the Schwartz Group to have 100% recyclable packaging or to reduce plastic by 20%? Uh, sometimes packaging reduction is equal to packaging waste prevention, but means certain compromises for the recycl recyclability. Of course. <laughs> well, first of all, these are our objectives. And uh, 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 if you don't set uh, high objectives, uh, uh, you tend to maybe try to reach them uh, too quickly and objectives are not there to uh, uh, be in this area to be reached very quickly but they have to be a little tougher as they look like of course it's not uh, easy uh, to make 100 percent recycling nobody at the moment is uh, uh, really uh, if you look at the uh, real processes doing 100 percent recycling but then the question starts what do you actually calculate uh, and how do you calculate recycling if we uh, look at our sorting plants uh, um, today. Uh, about 70% of the material we are getting is what we really want, meaning plastic packaging or other types of packaging. 30% are 20 to 30% are unwanted items. So, is it realistic to have the objective to get 100% uh, uh, recyclable output of the sorting plant? In theory, yes, but then you have to change the collection system. So, um, and then you have to ask the second question: What is 100 percent? Is the input, the total input of the sorting plant, 100 percent, or is uh, what you want to get out is more or less all uh, available uh, material which was uh, in your input material? And that's maybe the objective, um, which is technically certainly a challenge. The other point with a recycler. Uh, no recycler today reaches 100% recycling with the input he gets because of course in the sorted products uh, you still have things in there which uh, the sorter may not need or cannot need. Very simple example, if you uh, take uh, polypropylene today uh, which is uh, collected and sorted, you have uh, in Germany at least something you call Wertstofftonne, something like a joint collection with non-packaging materials and uh, uh, many of these polypropylene non-packaging plastics uh, are produced with other additives which means that in the subsequent uh, uh, recycling process uh, this material is uh, technically sorted out because it's heavier than other polypropylenes and the uh, selection process within the cycling is based on selection by weight uh, and the swim sink uh, 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 step and then you don't have it in there, although it's, although it's a good uh, material to use. So these are things we still have to work on. Um, I can't tell you exactly when 100% is uh, reachable, but then the question is what you calculate to be 100%. Sure. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, these, these are both big goals. And I think we will have to reach different stretch goals, goals on the way there 
which will uh, be both. You, you will reduce plastic use and on the same time have more recycled plastic uh, in, both, uh, in both ways. Mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you for that. Um, yeah, thank, thank you all for listening, for being here. Uh, Dr. Poors, thank you for that presentation. I would mm -hmm. love to have you all head over to the, their booth for any further questions, get in contact. I think uh, it's very, very interesting. Ingo Fair, you, for your question, I would love to have you head over to their booth and just ask it in the live chat because we will go on with our other presentation. I will have uh, Thomas Diekmann and Alan Bartolin with me uh, from Eggersmann and they will talk a little bit about their different machines. Uh, and yeah, I wish you a good day and thank you, Mr. Poors. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.